Hey there, I'm Sandy Reese, Chief Encouragement Officer here at Get Fully Funded, where we help small nonprofits learn how to raise the money they need to fully fund their mission. I'm here to help you learn how to master the art and science of fundraising. And I've got a great tip for you in just a moment. But before we get to that, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that the next time we post a really great tip like this one, you're among the first to know. Okay, on to this week's tip. Planning is critical for new nonprofits, well, for every nonprofit, but it's a little harder when your nonprofit is new, when you don't have programs started yet, or if you're in a situation like we are right now, where we're all facing all kinds of new and different situations, thank you, COVID, um, it can be really difficult to plan programs and plan fundraising, but listen, organizations that grow and succeed and do really well are the ones that hit the time out and do some planning. So I know it's easy for you to think, well, you know, we're not really doing a whole lot yet. I'm not real worried about it. I'm gonna, you know, let's just see what comes. Don't do that. Let's get some plans in place because it's gonna be easier to get other people on board to help you if you know what you're doing. It's gonna be easier to get board members engaged when there's a direction. It's gonna be easier for you to Manage your day, day to day, if you know what you need to be working on. So planning is really important. I don't know about you, but I cannot live without my calendar. <laughs> like if it's not on my calendar, it does not happen. It's got to be on the calendar. It's got to be on the list. And I have a, a special way that I manage all my activities, to-dos, and projects in Trello. We'll do that another time. But what I want to talk about today is planning. Here's the biggest mistake that most nonprofits make, especially brand new ones. They think, well, we'll just go out and raise all the money we can, and then we'll figure out how to spend it. And that, my friends, is backwards. It's totally backwards. Think about it from the donor's point of view. You go up to a donor or prospect and you say, hey, give us money. We're going to be doing some great stuff with it. People are skeptical and they want to know, what are you doing? What are you planning to do? How is my money going to be used? How's my money going to make a difference? So what you need to do first is think about what services and programs you want to deliver. So you could think about it in the next 90 days. You could think about it for the next year, whatever works for you. But it's important for you to think about exactly what services you want to deliver, how many people you want in your programs, how often your programs are going to run, because that is when you can start to calculate the cost. See, this is important. You got to first think about what service you want to deliver, what programs you want to offer, and then crunch the numbers so that you know exactly what that cost is going to be. Because that cost down to the penny becomes your fundraising goal. See how easy that is? It makes a lot of sense. Now, I know, I know that this is not the easiest thing. And I've done this with a lot of organizations where we have to sit and say, well, <laughs> we don't really know. Let's give it our best shot. And after you do this for a while, your best shot will become pretty accurate and pretty reliable. Sometimes it's not. You need to make adjustments as you go. And sometimes you'll nail it right on. My team was working on something like that earlier this week where we said, we just have no idea, but we have to get a number on paper. We have to think about it. We have to have a method to our madness. We have to find a way to do this projection. And we did. And once we did, we felt pretty good that it was probably the right number that we came up with. So I'm going to challenge you to do the same. If you're not good at, at projections, if you're not good at numbers, then you need to find yourself a volunteer, a board member, or somebody who can help you through this exercise. Because what you want to do, number one, is decide what program services you're going to offer. And then number two, calculate the cost. That cost becomes your fundraising goal. And then you can put your fundraising plan together to start figuring out how you're going to reach that goal. Now, that can be a real trick, too. If you haven't done fundraising before, you don't really know how things are going to work. So, for example, if you're thinking about doing uh, Giving Tuesday in fourth quarter, and you've never done Giving Tuesday before, how in the world do you have any idea how much money that you might be able to raise? Well, that's where it becomes um, a bit of... A bit of art and a bit of science and a little bit of magic thrown in just for fun where you you think about how many people you have that you can reach so the number of followers you have on social media the number of people whose names or emails you have in your system 
what kinds of donations they've given you in the past, if any, and um, how many of those people you think you can reach, how many of them you think will give if you have a really good ask. And it, it's a trick. I do this all the time for clients, and that's trying to do the projections to figure out how much can this really raise. And I'll tell you a secret. I rarely get it right. I get close. Some things I overestimate, some things I underestimate. But at the end of the period, at the end of the, the quarter or the end of the year, it always works out. It always works out so that we figure out how to bring in the kind of revenue that the organization needs. All right, so you're going to have to do this too. Start by laying out programs so that you're not doing this backwards. Figure out what it's going to cost. That becomes your fundraising goal. And then start looking at individual fundraising activities and how much that's going to add to your bottom line. The more you do this, the better you're going to get. And the more years of history you have with your nonprofit, the easier it gets because then you can go back and look at history. Um, one of my team members and I were literally doing this today for a client where we were trying to project what their revenue is going to be for the rest of the calendar year. So today is August, or August, October 7th. It's October 7th. And we were saying, okay, what do we think October, November, December? So we went back and looked at last year. We we're looking at the number. We said, okay, were there, uh, before we just say, well, great, there's the number from last year. Let's assume it's going to be the same. I said, okay, hang on. Ask them if there was anything unusual that happened last year. So was there a huge grant that was a, like a one-time shot? Was there an estate gift that was probably a one-time shot? Was there an unusual major gift that was a one-time shot? Because we need to know that. We need to take those one-off amazing things out so that we can see like what, what organically happened last year that we anticipate will repeat this year. So the more you do this, the more you figure these kinds of things out and it will help you get better and better and better at planning. And I know not everybody likes to plan. I get it. But listen, if you're going to get serious about growing your nonprofit and helping as many as you can and changing as many lives as you can, this is a skill that you're going to have to develop. And that is the skill of hitting the pause button long enough to lay out a plan for your organization. It's what makes all the difference in the world. I guarantee you, any successful nonprofit that you look around and see in your community or across the world, they've got a plan. Successful organizations have a plan. Organizations that struggle usually don't have a plan or they've got a couple of loose ideas in their head. And listen, if your plan is not in writing, it's not a real plan. All right, there's a ton of resources over on our blog at getfullyfunded.com slash blog, and you can take advantage of all of them. In fact, this week we have an article on uh, fundraising templates, fundraising plan templates for new nonprofits. And inside that you'll find our one-page fundraising plan. It's a download you can go grab. Um, and there's also a couple of other resources there. So getfullyfunded.com slash blog. That's going to be a great place to find some resources for your nonprofit. Y'all have a really good day. I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.